Well, good afternoon. Uh, privacy, that's, that's something what we need to discuss today. That too in the ambit of Telegraph Act plus Information Technology Act, as well as the entire setup of constitution. It's, it's highly uh, inevitable to discuss privacy without constitution and vice versa. So quite natural, I'll be initially starting with constitution and then we'll go to those specific statutes under telecommunication law. The minute that word privacy comes to our mind, possibly constitution is the only way to establish it. That's, that's what comes to our mind. The natural consequence is that we do not have any privacy based legislation in India. That is the reason why we have such a situation. I don't have privacy in terms of communication as a matter of separate regulation. I don't have any special law which establishes that no, it can't be done or rather it's protected under this law. We don't have it. We, when, whenever this situation occurs in India that you don't have a specific set of right, we try and relate it to constitution. The very famous one which comes in is article 21, life and liberty. So if, if your right is not protected under any other law, it is protected under life and liberty. Same is the case with privacy, same is the case with any communication what we make today, right? Difficulty is, difficulty is all the time we may not be able to establish privacy up to an extent to the levels of telecommunication. Necessarily I need a special set of statute which would demarcate the line between wherever there is a required amount of surveillance in a given communication and up to what extent my privacy shall be you know, protected. The balance between the two would be the perfect set of legislation which should come out with. That's, that's what the entire emphasis is. But difficulty is we are not able to judge that balance depending upon the variety of communications we have. Just a brief example of this factor, recent one. Most of us believe that email is the most secured form of communication nowadays. It's a, it's a part and parcel of internet era that you know mass communication can be done through it and you can bulk mail one particular notice to many people at the same time. That's, that's the whole virtue. And we believe that it's the most protected one because only we know what is the password. Gmail, the most trusted website, the most trusted service provider. Legal advisor of that, Robert Saunders, in uh, 2012, November, gave a public statement that, sorry, whenever federal government asks us, we open the communications and give it to the federal government. Any authority, any competent authority who demands such thing, we will give it to it. Now, obviously, every single communication does not connote any challenge to law. But whenever federal agencies in US demand it, they provide it. That's the logic. Now question comes in that why such surveillance comes in? We have so many factors into it. The first factor that comes in is obviously safety of people, public safety at large. That is, that is the whole issue where, where it stands. And sometimes certain communications being illegal in nature. I think in the past few sessions we are discussing that that how a communication becomes an illegal one, something which is obscene in nature, something which is absolutely illegal in the sense that you are selling something through an advertisement which is prohibited kind of stuff in India, right? NDPS had certain substances to that, Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act, bans sell of certain set of medicines and certain set of drugs. If you advertise them, the communication will become an illegal one. The advertisement itself will become an illegal one. Obviously, all these things in line with our Article 19 and Article 21, we need to judge it. It's not just about how, how you communicate, but it's also about up to what extent that surveillance as well as that privacy is established. Now, no challenge to it, but still, sting operations is a reality in today's world. We can't negate that. One common man came in, became a CM of one particular state in India, capital of India, advocated the stuff. Yes, we need to sting, we need to create stings, now it is hooting him back, right? It's all that is happening, what, what, we, are, what we are not expecting, what, what we did not expect just last few years. It's not just about you and me, it's about every single person who is using phones nowadays. Maybe subject to whatever constitutional norms, ethos we have, in the present structure of the constitutionalism in India, we need to understand that we may subdue that particular fundamental right after public safety, 
public emergency comes in question. Now, quite naturally, we need to figure it out up to what extent this can be done. There are two ways of looking at it. See, I would suggest that if we only stick up to constitution, it would be an, you know, a little indecent kind of looking at the whole perspective because you are restricting yourself then. The reason is there was a law or rather I should say there is a law which is continued in last few years or rather for last few years we are seeing this that you know whenever privacy comes into question we are only striking the bell under article 21. But to tell you honestly it is not only article 21 the whole issue began even prior to constitution. Why? Because we have a legislation prior to constitution of India where privacy, surveillance, all such things have been mentioned and interestingly it is the area which we are going to discuss, Telegraph Act. Now, Telegraph Act was passed in the year 1885. It was the 13th legislation during that time, 13th of 1885. Now the issue is in those days when Britishers were ruling us, at that point of time surveillance was I mean, no doubt, it was not challenged at all. It was the government which enforced that issue and they made the provisions in such a manner, those couldn't be handled properly. They wanted the dominion over the, over the country as well as over the communication. So obviously, they will make the law which is more tented towards breaching privacy and getting into the surveillances. They provided it with two provisions which unfortunately are still in our law. Section 5, sub clause 2 and section 25 of the Telegraph Act precise, precisely mention about these two issues. 5 sub clause 2 clearly mentions that yes, surveillance of telegraph or surveillance of any communication media can be done if it is a matter of public emergency. Now please understand this, I am talking about an 1885 legislation. Prior to constitution, almost around 5-6 decades before constitution came into existence, we had a law which allowed surveillance. It's almost like that big boss song, somebody is watching you. You know, all the time you have somebody who is, you know, there, observing, monitoring every set of communication what you are making, right? So technically speaking, there was a law on surveillance which actually breached the very context of privacy since 1885. It was there. Now the issue is, why did not we change it after constitution came into being? There were challenges as to section 5 sub clause 2 in different different legislations or rather even in different different litigations in India. Supreme Court had its own ways or you know own ideas as to surveillance and public safety, public emergency, all of that. But technically it was never removed from the Telegraph Act. That's, that's what the whole ethos is, that's, that's the whole problem is. They have a reason to believe so because promptly when that public emergency as a connotation comes in or as a restriction comes in, we link it towards so many factors. We start with privacy and terrorism, terrorism and international terrorism. We also come into all those illegal activities which should be, you know, having that monitoring onto it, prohibition onto it. So quite natural it is more tented towards that. It is never, it is never read only in context of, okay, I am making an illegal communication so nobody should watch it or nobody should have a surveillance to it. It is the other way around. Right from day one when the con constitution was enforced since 26th of January 1950, till this date, every single judge who got an opportunity to deal with privacy as a substance, especially when it comes to telecom law or telecom issues. They never surrendered the telecommunication law for the sake of constitution or vice versa. They had this basic idea that okay, both can simultaneously survive. So sometimes if required for the public safety or for public emergency, we will give importance to it and we will see to it that your phones or your communication devices are getting scanned, are getting intercepted. Interception for public sake or for public safety is not new to India. It's been there forever since we are using all these communication devices. And it has also been the factor that we can't deny the risk involved in communication getting leaked. There are multiple factors to it. And mind it, it's not just India. Best examples, Wikileaks, 
I hope you are you are reading newspapers and you are aware of it. What exactly is the situation? Assange, right? He he started with that, leaking the communications between sovereigns or possibly the ministers and presidents of different different countries, and what sort of communication is made to deal with certain key issues of the world. It's not just about which country is aligned with which another another country, or it's not only related to country versus country. It's also a factor which is involving economics. It's also involving something like uh, warfare, anti-terrorism legislations, all of that. Small, small lobby-based approaches of the countries, and approach of one president of one country with the other president of other country. All of the communications relating relating to that was leaked by a private player. Now you imagine. if this is the amount of surveillance and this is the amount of technicalities coming into privacy really we need to define the structure properly how exactly it's going to come up we can't deny surveillance we can't keep it it's almost a factor that you know it's an inevitability involved into it it's a situation where either you want it for the sake of establishing law and order situation at a at a core and on the other hand you also want to respect the dignity and privacy privacy of the person's communication but one must understand that you need to draw that bridge or draw, draw those lines very fast those draw, those drawing of lines should be within the ambit of constitutionality there should not be any situation where you are over surpassing either of them so it needs to be seen properly now there are few challenges regarding that obviously when i look at that you know constitutional provision of privacy i mean naturally i'm looking it under 21 that also gives me that feeling the very essence of 21 life and liberty no person shall be deprived of it but except according to the procedure established by law now that's where it all stands nehru had his own ideas regarding it when the constitution was drafted he invited uh, justice frank fortner from us why because the whole provision if you see it's actually an amended form of what us constitution has they actually took out that fundamental right from different different constitutions of the world but when we see article 21 no person shall be deprived of his life and liberty except according to the procedure established by law this whole provision other than the last few words of that provision everything has been taken from us constitution the last few set of words have been amended once reason as i said when the constituent assembly was actually drafting the constitution the words what they have in us constitution they had a challenge to it due process they never said that we have procedure established by law instead in us constitution it was due process clause they said life and liberty can be ascertained on the basis of due process of law it can be taken away if the process of law is due right that's that's how they wanted to look into it but the challenge was in india they were little scared i believe about that word due process how, how what is that due process how we are going to establish that due process so instead they said okay we'll we'll take out somebody's opinion to check it out how that due process could be established and then when they got the real meaning from justice frankfurtner nehru and his team and possibly the constituent assembly was very much convinced we don't want judicial supremacy over here we want parliamentary supremacy so they altered those few words in the last segment or the last part of article 21 now what is the outcome procedure established by law so what has happened who is establishing procedure by law obviously the parliament so whatever parliament does or whatever parliament says becomes a reality in this country judiciary is there to interpret the law not to make law on its own ha ah, by accident or by situational demands it will make a law we respect that but we don't want judicial supremacy over parliamentary supremacy parliament for people will make law right that's that's the whole idea and we changed it now see what what is the outcome of that we had a pre independence or pre constitution era where laws were passed and which were still carried out even post independence or rather i should say post constitutional era those were not undone those were not changed totally some of them they were but when it comes to telecom the first very set of legislation which came in because of britishers or british because of the british rule was 